Sup everyone, this is Elijah Blau and I am the host of the Side Hustler Society. This is a place where you can learn a lot about the various side hustles that can help you reach your financial goals. But in this episode, with it being the intro and the first kind of introduction to me that you're experiencing, we're actually going to be going a lot into my backstory in this episode, as well as the various hustles that I've done and my inspiration for starting this podcast. Now, this episode is probably something that's going to age pretty well because you may become more curious about this stuff as you listen to later episodes. I want to set that expectation up front right now because a lot of people love to hear an origin story. So with that being said, I'm excited to share the origin story with you. Let's go ahead and get started. Welcome to the Side Hustler Society podcast with your host, Elijah Bilal. This is where you can find out more about hustles that are best for you. And of course, make more money in the process. Elijah has been in the gig economy and freelance space for over five years and has done over 3,000 deliveries on Uber Eats. He's an Airbnb super host, runs multiple YouTube channels, and is the author of the best-selling book, The Anatomy of Financial Success. It's his mission to empower people with the tools needed to be successful. Now, welcome your host, the king of side hustles, Elijah Bilal. Sup, everyone. Now that we've done the official intro, let's go ahead and get this party started. So most people actually think that, uh, What I'm doing now, which is in the online marketing space or making money online, that's another way of saying it, as well as uh, doing uh, Airbnb and real estate investing, is something I've always done. But uh, this isn't necessarily true. My journey actually started as an entrepreneur, and this was all the way back close to 2012. Now, I was always, not always, but I did have various jobs throughout my life, such as I worked at my aunt's janitorial company. I worked uh, for Walmart for a bit. I worked for Whole Foods and Amazon at the same time. But honestly, my entrepreneur endeavors always got started by people introducing me to network marketing. And I actually did a few of them back in the day, such as uh, Amway. But I did not like the fact that uh, you didn't have the certain amount of control that you, in my opinion, really needed to make things work. For example, if I wanted to do a discount on like all of the inventory that I had. I didn't have that ability because I wasn't in charge of changing the prices. So that inspired me to start my first business, which was a Sealy Tiva. That's Key Swahili for indigenous remedies. I sold herbal capsules and herbal teas, and that gave me what I really wanted the most, which was the control over the price and also not having to follow certain policies in their program. If anyone's familiar with network marketing, some of them have I won't say the strangest policies, but they kind of hamper you when it comes to marketing, because uh, I guess some people have done some stuff in the past, which gave them a bad rep. So they decide to just not make that option available. With my business, I got a lot of a uh, firsthand experience with email marketing, with uh, selling in person, with just the overall how to run a business. And a lot of the tactics that I use today were born out of that. So it's pretty ironic that, uh, I didn't cons- that was a side hustle, but most people would just consider that a business. But I uh, never made enough to do it full time, so it still fits in the side hustle category. That was before all these options we have today, where a lot of companies will take care of marketing and stuff for you. All you need to do is put the work in. But I digress. Uh, eventually, I uh, shut that business down because I had to choose between picking that or pursuing a career in a nine to five, which at that time was uh, amazon.com. I I decided to go ahead and go with uh, Amazon and I did get promoted to PA, but after about nine months of uh, being a PA, I had this sick feeling in my stomach that I just wasn't living up to my full potential. Can any of y'all relate to that? Have you really just felt that you know you can be doing better financially? You may not even necessarily know how you can be doing better, but you know you can be doing better. And this kicks in when you uh, sit down and really look at how much you're making per year. One day, and this was when I was working for Whole Foods and Amazon, I sat down and just calculated how much I'm making on a yearly basis. 
I was working around like six to eight hours per week. And it came out to be around like $35,000. I sat on my couch just kind of depressed. Like, could I really be working this hard for that little money? It just didn't make any sense. The crazy thing is a lot of people actually are in this predicament right now. But because they don't actually sit down and do the math to see exactly where they stand in their finances, this cycle can go on technically forever. The key thing is to find a side hustle that's going to make you happy and also bring in the money. And that clearly wasn't doing it. So I kind of had a mini flashback to that, which caused me to put in my two weeks notice at Amazon. And I decided to re-enter the world of network marketing because I was tired of... Uh, Handling the distribution of things. That's basically what I did when I was running my first business, Asili Tiba. So I was in the total life changes network marketing field. And um, I actually kind of mastered the art of sales in uh, that particular company. I would uh, go out, promote the product, go out to health and wellness events, use my knowledge of, uh, I'm not a certified personal trainer, but I do know a lot about exercising and stuff. I use that knowledge to help sell the product. Now, when I was doing this, I was doing relatively well. If I went to an event with uh, all the products that I had, which uh, at the time was the Instant Tea and the IOSA Tea, those were like the best-selling things in the TLC uh, product list, I would sell out. I make maybe two or 300 bucks at that event, and I started building a small downline. But uh, one thing I particularly didn't like, I didn't like having to motivate unmotivated people. So anyone who knows anything about network marketing, when you recruit people, uh, depending on the type of people you recruit, they need to be kind of spoon fed. They need to be uh, looked after, which is fine, but they lack the motivation to take things to the next level. So while I was just sitting down reflecting, I do remember that one of my friends had mentioned that she is having fun being an Uber driver and actually invited me to uh, do a little Uber challenge. Now, this was a few years ago. But I only did like three trips and I got promoted to Amazon shortly after. So you know, I, I never did a Uber again. But I was just uh, curious, like, you know what? What would it be like to uh, do it again? So I actually went out uh, after updating my paperwork because, you know, I tried to go online, but my insurance wasn't uh, up to date. I got a new insurance, so they needed me to update that uh, information. Then I just turned the app on and uh, found that I actually liked being an Uber driver. Welcome to the side hustle phase of the gig economy when it comes to Elijah. And I started doing that more than I was doing the TLC thing because, to be frank, I actually liked it more. A lot of people think uh, I prefer delivery driving over rideshare driving. That's actually not true. I have certain reasons for why I circled into Uber East, but we'll go into that in a sec. But for you Uber drivers out there, you could probably uh, relate to this. The money was uh, pretty decent. And if you have a sociable personality like me, then you love talking to people. You can kind of finesse like more tips out of them if you know how to do it. <laughs> but after a little while, uh, Uber kept harassing me about getting involved with Uber Eats. Like, do you want to do Uber Eats? Do you want to do Uber Eats? And this was before they added tipping on the platform. So I was like, no, that's a joke. Like, you make in any type of delivery situation, you're going to make the most money with the tips. But eventually they added tip into the platform. And the day they added it, I said, you know what? Let me play around with that Uber Eats. Turns out I can make uh, around the same money as I did with Rideshare with Uber Eats in a lot of cases. In some cases, Rideshare still made more money. But uh, the, food delivery, the food delivery gave me the ability to do one thing that I couldn't do in Rideshare. Uh, there's no one but me and a burrito in the car. And I... Uh, Pretty soon, the burrito is going to be delivered, so it would go back to just being me in the car. That led to uh, me consuming a lot of audiobooks. In fact, a lot of things I'm doing today, I learned about them and how to do them through audiobooks, which I listened to when I was an Uber Eats driver. So in other words, I could get paid to be educated about things. I'm sorry, but who's going to pass that up? So to bring some numbers into the equation, because some of y'all are probably wondering, like Elijah, we want to hear the numbers, like how much were you making? With the rideshare thing, I was making usually between $17 and $20 an hour. And with the food delivery, it was between $11 and $18 an hour. Until I got good at it, then I started getting closer to the $18 an hour. 
And every now and then I would exceed it, but it wasn't on a regular basis. It was normally between 11 and $18. And this is why I'm consuming all these audiobooks. So I would also listen to YouTube videos while I'm delivering food too. And I bumped into this cat on YouTube called The Simple Driver. And he broke down how to build an Uber website and how to get money off of referrals and all this kind of thing. And I thought, you know what, that'd be a good idea. So I started a YouTube channel called The App Lifestyle. Well, it started out as the Uber Lifestyle, but I had to change the name later because of trademark. But I started covering rideshare content on there. And if y'all are wondering, yes, this is my introduction to being a YouTuber. So after doing some rideshare content, I noticed that the rideshare niche was just saturated. So I decided to actually look into who's making Uber Eats content. And at the time, uh, not anyone was just focusing on Uber Eats. You had a few YouTubers that was doing like a bunch of apps like, hey, I cover Uber Eats and DoorDash and Grubhub and all these. I decided to focus my channel just on Uber Eats. And that paid off because I kind of became known as the Uber Eats expert. Eventually, I got my channel monetized and I started pulling in around $100 per month just off the ad revenue. But let's back up a sec because that wasn't the reason I started a YouTube channel. I started it because I saw a huge opportunity to not only help other drivers because there's some things you need to know to learn the ropes, but there's also a referral opportunity to make a lot of money. So Uber has a, well, I shouldn't say has, they don't have it anymore, at least not in the same form. But at the time, their referral program was once someone does a certain amount of trips, you would get paid a referral amount if they used your code. And my code was plastered all over my channel. Now, depending on where they signed up, this could be $50 or it could be $700. And I am actually not joking about that. In fact, for those of y'all that are viewing on YouTube, you can see on the screen exactly what I'm talking about in terms of these referral amounts. I'm not joking at all. So once some steam got rolling or once the steam, you know, forget the steam. OK, once uh, things got going, I was consistently making between 500 and like two thousand dollars a month just off of referrals. This is my first introduction into affiliate slash referral marketing. And uh, needless to say, this made a great side hustle. And uh, after a little while, I just dropped the network marketing thing altogether because it actually made more sense to drive uh, for Uber Eats, make a lot of money, make more content for my YouTube channel, which in turn would increase the amount of referrals I got. It was actually awesome now that I'm uh, thinking back to it. But eventually, I already knew this wasn't going to be sustainable because uh, Uber, I knew they were going to slice the referral program once they went public. So thinking ahead of the game, I wanted to break into the personal finance niche. So I started making some content about it on the app lifestyle. Audience didn't respond to it all that favorably. You know, they, they wanted what they signed up for, which is uh, Uber Eats and a Kaisley ride share. So I respected that and decided to take all the knowledge that I accumulated doing this to build another channel called Financial Anatomy. So talking about the Uber Eats and uh, ride share, portion of my life actually brings back a lot of uh, just fond memories. I remember swinging by various restaurants and giving them a try during, uh, I guess you could say my lunch break in between the hot times of like lunchtime and dinner time because that's when it's popping on the Uber Eats. And I remember one day as I was watching a uh, YouTube, I got recommended a video by uh, Roberto Blake. Now y'all might be wondering, y'all might be seeing like a consistent theme. Like every time I get into another side hustle, I'm usually inspired by someone else talking about it and they break down the details of how to do it. And then I just follow that blueprint. A lot of times this side hustle stuff is not that complicated. It's just reinventing the wheel, but I will get to that a little, a little further. So he was talking about how to grow a YouTube channel and just dropping some good game on how to do so. I actually implemented some of his advice right away on the app lifestyle, saw some good results. Needless to say, I started watching more of his content and he started talking about freelancing. And if you have some kind of skill set or service to offer, then you need to make those services available. And he specifically talked about writing articles, how much he used to get paid and um, how you should be reaching out to these organizations to uh, basically become a writer for them. Then I sat there and thought about it like, you know what? 
he's got a good point. And I know a leader in this industry that uh, pays people to make videos. And that is uh, Harry Campbell from the Rideshare Guy. So that's when I um, shot him an email. I uh, saw that he didn't have much Uber Eats content. So I offered my services to make him some videos on his channel. He said, let's do a trial run. Trial turned out good. And I started making videos on the Rideshare Guy. Now keep in mind that everything I'm mentioning is still a side hustle when it sells. So you got the YouTube, you got the uh, Uber Eats driving, and uh, you got the, in this case, making uh, videos for another channel. All these are side hustles, but it's keeping me off the nine to five. So everything is combined into make a nice little payday, if you will. In fact, uh, if I was thinking back to how I was making, how much I was making around then, it's around like two to $3,000 per month. But moving on uh, with the story. So I've got these various things going on, but uh, eventually I knew that the Uber driver side was going to dry up, at least in terms of the YouTube channel, because uh, I knew uh, Uber was going to go public eventually. And I, I also knew that they were losing money at a, quite an alarming rate. So when they went public, I knew that that referral program, that very generous referral program that they had was uh, going to get axed. So thinking ahead of the game, I decided to uh, pivot my channel to personal finance because I knew that personal finance was one of the most well-paying niches on YouTube. And I made some content on the app lifestyle about personal finance, but uh, people didn't uh, really respond to it the way that I wanted to, wanted them to, because that's not what they signed up for. They signed up for you know, content on Uber Eats and maybe the occasional uh, rideshare video. And I so I respected their wishes, and I just put – that content on another channel started building it up called Financial Anatomy. This was around 2019. And then I read and listened to a book that uh, inspired me to change my game plan a little by introducing a product to the market. In fact, if here it is. For those of y'all that are watching me on YouTube, you see that I have a book in front of me. It's called Publish, The Proven Path from blank page to 10,000 copies sold. So I listened to this bad boy on audiobook, and uh, the author's name is a Chatler Bolt. If uh, you're wondering like how you can get that uh, book, I'll leave the details on how to get it in a uh, description and also the uh, show notes. But this book shows how to launch a new business by becoming a best-selling author. Now, it was a great book. Well, not was. It is a great book, and it lays the framework on how to do this so perfectly. So I decided to write a book called The Anatomy of Financial Success, and my goal was to make it a bestseller. And I would use that to launch this new business off the ground called Financial Anatomy. Now, right now, Financial Anatomy was just a YouTube channel, and it wasn't even monetized yet. But it fit into my game plan of pivoting into the personal finance niche. So I followed the details in that book while making a few adjustments on my own. And I also looked at other channels that focused on book self-publishing. And lo and behold, it became a best Amazon selling. Let me rephrase that. <laughs> Got tongue time. It became a bestseller on Amazon. And that was just a glorious feeling. It helped a lot of people in the process. And it definitely fit into the uh, game plan. This is a good example of if you're going to be helping people as part of your game plan, you will be rewarded for it in a monetary sense. Now, so for those of y'all that are keeping score here, I've got the Uber Eats stuff going on. I've got the YouTuber stuff going on. I've got the uh, videos for the rideshare guy going on. And now I have a being a published author going on. All of these can be side hustles in themselves, but they're all combined in my case. Now we get to go to the year of uh, 2020, which is, you know what, I don't think it needs an introduction. You just need to know we're heading into uh, 2020. So let's uh, go ahead and get into it. So 2020 comes around the corner, and uh, me and the owner of the Rideshare Guy, uh, Harry Campbell, had uh, talked, and uh, he noticed that uh, I liked to do video editing, and I also had a lot of experience uh, with YouTube. So we worked out a deal to where I could do some video editing uh, for his company in terms of uh, videos, and I could uh, become a YouTube manager on his platform. That's a position which I held for um, two years. And 
once again, if we're going to keep with the theme of side hustles, this is a lot of uh, side hustles going on. In fact, at, at this point, we can just remove the side from the word side hustle or phrase side hustle and just say, I'm a hustler, baby. <laughs> Funny plug. But yeah, uh, 2020 rolls in. As we know, the pandemic kicks in. This is a year which we mentally want to forget, but it did happen. But at this point, in terms of uh, video editing, I'm making about like $1,000 per month. And as far as uh, being a YouTube manager, I'm making between $1,500 and $2,500 per month. This is while uh, at this point, I did Uber Eats sparingly, but uh, it wasn't a full time anymore. So my main focus was building the financial anatomy channel up and maintaining what I had which is the video editing and also the YouTube management for the rideshare guy. I eventually got impatient with Financial Anatomy, the YouTube channel, and I decided to just go daily until it was monetized. That lasted for like 30 days, but it paid off and the channel got monetized and that added an additional like $700 per month to the uh, piggy bank, which kept growing because I, I kept making videos. Nowadays, it's pulling between $1,500 and $2,000 a month just passively without me even doing anything. When anytime I upload, it starts to increase. So we fast forward to 2021, and this is when uh, me and Harry talked, and I told him that uh, this would be the last year that I would be doing the uh, YouTube management because I uh, really wanted to uh, fully activate my game plan. I didn't tell you all this before. But I did want to get into the real estate niche. So the idea was to make all this money and then use it to break into the real estate niche. But uh, if anyone knows anything about this market and the pandemic and uh, the influx of people coming in from New York and California, destabilizing the Dallas Fort Worth real estate market, the market is crap for buyers right now. I decided, you know what, instead of doing this, maybe I should look at maybe getting the spot in Airbnb in it. And uh, that was going to take time. So the management for the Riser guy came at came to an end at the end of 2021. And in the last quarter of 2021, in fact, this happened in October, I managed to pick up my first lease uh, via negotiation for doing what's known as rental arbitrage. That's basically subleasing. So I'm renting the place from a landlord and then I place the uh, apartment on Airbnb. Someone then rents that place out on Airbnb and stay for a short period of time. That's known as a short-term rental, although I do allow a, a mid-term and long-term rentals as well. That was actually doing fairly well, and I managed to pick up a second property, a second apartment, which I did the same thing for. And we fast forward to today, and that's basically what I've got going on right now. I've got the Airbnb stuff going on. I've got financial anatomy going on. I've got multiple YouTube channels going on. And uh, I do still do video editing for the Rideshare Guy. So with all that being said, that's Elijah's origin story when it comes to side hustles. So that's a great place to end this episode. Like I said, this is the introduction. Y'all want to know more about me. And as future episodes roll out, that's why I want to make this episode as a reference point. And that doesn't mean that I'm not going to ever talk about this stuff again in other episodes. I probably will. And like there might be some details that y'all want to know about in the YouTube section. Feel free to leave that in the comment section. So in a future episode, maybe I'll go into more details in that particular part. Because everything I mentioned is a side hustle. And if y'all want to see it or hear it, then there'll be a whole episode dedicated towards that. So with my backstory being covered, this is why I decided to start the Side Hustler Society podcast and also YouTube channel. The culture of just uh, hustling and side hustles is not only it's pretty big right now, but I see it getting bigger as we're heading towards another recession and people need to know ways of making more money. Now, keep in mind, that's not the only thing that you need to know. There are budgeting aspects and things you need to know about investing. But that's for the Financial Anatomy YouTube channel, which you're free to check out. Link will be in the uh, show notes and uh, also links will be there in the YouTube channel. But this channel is really about diving into the mindset of being a hustler, as well as different side hustles that you can try, the details of it, what is the potential to go full time in that side hustle. 
uh, what are the dynamics of how money works into it? What are you going to need to get started? And also just some things that will help you develop that mindset. If you're really serious about making more money, as well as avoiding things that can subtract from the experience and likewise your bottom line. I will catch y'all in the next episode of the Side Hustler Society. If you're on the YouTube channel, don't forget to subscribe. It helps the channel out a lot, and you can be notified when we drop another video, as well as give a thumbs up for the algorithm. It's very much appreciated. If you're listening to the podcast somewhere else, feel free to review this episode and uh, just share your thoughts about the Side Hustler Society so far. Look forward to bringing y'all some awesome content. I'll catch y'all later. Elijah out. This episode may be over, but your hustling journey has just started. Visit the SideHustleSociety.com to access all links and resources mentioned in the show that will help you on your hustler's journey.